In our discussion of the reproductive system, I mentioned the maintenance of pregnancy being accomplished by the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin or the hormone HCG. So this is actually produced by the early embryo prior to the development of the placenta. So you'll remember that this embryo is going to implant in the lining of the uterus and it's gonna initially get its nutrients by feeding off that lining of the uterus so that um, it doesn't actually have the placenta. So in order to maintain that lining, HCG levels need to increase substantially and stay high for at least three months. So when we look at this, um, the human chorionic gonadotropin levels, you'll see that like at eight weeks, they are at their highest. And this is where um, spontaneous abortions can occur. So a spontaneous abortion or miscarriage is early on in pregnancy. And it can be due to Um, low uh, levels of HCG that are not high enough. So the embryo not producing sufficient HCG. So if there's a genetic abnormality in the embryo that makes it not viable, it won't produce enough HCG. And so it won't make it past that screening process where the mother, um, mother's body decides that the embryo needs to be aborted. So this is kind of an interesting idea because it means that there might be a lot more um, spontaneous abortions early on than we think. And in your textbook and elsewhere, I've seen it said that about 30% of all pregnancies actually end in a spontaneous abortion. So it could be up to 30% of all pregnancies. So this could be um, early on when the female, he doesn't even realize that she is pregnant. Um, she could be late and then all of a sudden she gets a period and she had had an embryo implanted, but the embryo was spontaneously aborted. And so this is important also because it means that only um, healthy embryos will be maintained in the lining. So how does HCG do this? You'll remember that it maintains the corpus luteum, which is actually in the ovary. So that corpus luteum will actually produce high levels of estrogen and progesterone. So notice this is produced by the estrogen and progesterone. Now at about three to four months, the placenta is present and we can directly feed the developing embryo and it becomes a fetus. And the placenta takes over. Um, so this drops off and the placenta takes over producing estrogen and progesterone and maintaining the lining of the uterus. So this early um, high levels of HCG I mentioned can be used to uh, detect pregnancy with over-the-counter birth um, or pregnancy tests when you pee on the pregnancy tests. But it can also, um, interestingly, perhaps it is the reason behind morning sickness. So early on, oftentimes, females that are pregnant become very nauseated and they can't eat very many different types of food, like certain foods that they used to be able to eat, like maybe spicy foods or um, foods that might be high in alkaloids like Brussels sprouts or broccoli or maybe even onions or coffee or cigarette smoke, right? All of those will make a woman very nauseous. 
And um, it could be extreme so that she might even feel like she is constantly having motion sickness. But the interesting thing about that is, is that it could be a mechanism to make sure that the female doesn't ingest certain things that early on during um, pregnancy might be uh, damaging to the fetus. Another really interesting thing um, about early on during pregnancy is that sometimes females will crave clay-like substances. And in some cultures, they actually eat clay dirt. And that clay interestingly binds to certain alkaloids in um, plants that makes them so that they are not able to be absorbed by the small intestine. So that desire to eat um, clay and that craving for clay um, might also be an adaptation um, to help to avoid getting toxins um, in your body that might harm early on embryonic development.